can be difficult to decide what graphics card to go with when you're buying a full new system or if you just want to upgrade. Hopefully this video can answer some of those questions for you, also work out how much you should be spending and what sort of features you should uh, you know, be looking for and the ones that you should probably shy away from. Now I think I should start off by answering the main question of the video which is how much you should spend on your graphics card. This often comes down to your budget, especially if you're planning on building a full system and not just upgrading. So if you're planning on building a full system and you're spending let's say about a thousand pounds or maybe a thousand dollars, I'd personally recommend the area of two to four hundred dollars or uh, two to four hundred pounds on a graphics card. That's my rough range. I'd probably say three hundred pounds is a good number, but it does often also come down to what you want to do with it as well. If you are planning on buying a full system, especially if you're just planning on gaming at let's say 1080p and you have about a thousand dollars to spend, you might want to go with the i5 version or perhaps AMD's Ryzen CPUs when they're available, you know, the four core version and save a bit of money and go at that extra mile with the graphics card rather than if you're also going to be doing video editing or 3D modeling where you might want to go with the i7 and spend just a little bit less on the graphics card. Likewise, if you're planning on playing 4K games, the minimum sort of graphics card I really recommend here is perhaps a 1070 uh, if you're running at sort of mid to high settings and if you want very high to ultra settings, you're looking at at least a 1080 if not a Titan XP. The use case is a very specific thing that you want to take into account here. So if you're planning on, as I said, 4K gaming, you're going to want a, you know, six, seven hundred pounds of allowance for your graphics card. Whereas if you're just planning on 1080p gaming with stuff like League of Legends and Dota, then you probably don't need much more than one to maybe 200 pounds. When it comes to performance, I especially recommend that you take a look at the benchmarks for the different types of cards. Because for example, an MSI 1070 will be slightly different in performance to a Strix 1070 because of the different cooling solutions and the different clock speeds that they auto boost to. Now this is especially on Nvidia's cards currently and potentially AMD's cards as they kind of evolve in feature sets uh, isn't too much of a problem because of the GPU boost type of stuff but it is something to be aware of and I do recommend checking out the benchmarks first. Also another consideration is what type of system you're putting it into. If you're putting it into a system like this where you've got plenty of space, plenty of airflow, plenty of ventilation then you'll want to more likely or not go with one of these open style designs, one of the sort of multi-fan designs uh, that are normally known as aftermarket. Whereas if you're putting it in a smaller chassis, especially with a lot less airflow, then you might want to go with one of the reference or blower style designs, something like the RX 470, RX 480, or stuff like Nvidia's reference cards uh, or the Founders Edition cards as well all have that sort of blower style. Likewise, if you're going for an ITX chassis like this one that I used for the ITX build guide, you want to go with one of the ITX graphics cards. So this one is a Gigabyte GTX 1060 ITX card. It's only about that long. It's actually really awesome, very powerful, actually pretty good temps as well and fits in a chassis that is this small, which is really impressive. Another thing to note is that you might not necessarily need to go with something from this specific generation, the most current one as something like this GTX 980 is actually a really good shout and even the R9 Fury isn't too bad either. I wouldn't recommend going with something like this though. This is a dead 3850. It's quite old. I think I got it either free or for like £10 so uh, that is just something to be aware of that while the current generation cards are currently what are effectively the best cards available you can sometimes get a little bit better value for money from the older generation cards. Just don't go uh, too old. On the feature side of things there's certainly a few things that I recommend you take a look at and see which one would work better for you. Stuff like Nvidia's Shadow Play, which is the way that they capture gameplay and use the onboard video encoder to make it a lot easier on the CPU. You also have AMD's Relive or Relive uh, software built into their drivers, which allows you to do exactly the same thing, although it allows you to stream directly from uh, the driver as well, which is quite nice, and add some custom overlays and stuff like that. Uh, there were, uh, I've actually done a comparison of that, so if you want to check that one out, I'll leave a card up above for you. But either way, there are a few software for features I do recommend you check out and also on the hardware side there are a few interesting things too. Stuff like on the XFX graphics card, the, this one the RX 470, they have these sort of hot swappable fans. Now these fans I think at the time of filming anywhere about £15 a pack. They come with two fans obviously single colour depending on which colour you pick uh, but the thing was at the time of filming the review it was only about £10 to upgrade from the 470 to the 480 for the same cooler so for me it felt just like a very weird thing that you were paying £15 
to get some different colored fans that performed exactly the same versus getting a better graphics card. Now, of course, that's one way to take on the sort of RGB lighting approach. And of course, if that's something that you're interested in, you might want to take a look at, for example, if you already have an ASUS motherboard, you might want to go with an ASUS graphics card because they have Aura Sync and it allows you to use one program to sync the colors uh, on the motherboard and on the graphics card and that sort of thing. But of course, if you have something like a, a Zotac graphics card, you might not necessarily care too much about being able to sync it all up. Another thing to mention is the ports and the connections on the card. Now, of course, you will always have that PCIe connection, but it is important to note both the rear I.O., so what your display connectors are, and what power inputs you require. So if you have a, an older power supply, especially if you're upgrading your graphics card rather than building a new system, then you might want to make sure that you have the necessary connectors on your power supply to be able to power the graphics card. Likewise, on the rear I.O., some graphics cards, especially on the same model line, so for example, Gigabyte's GTX 1080 Extreme Gaming cards has two HDMI ports in the back, whereas they would normally only have one. So that is something to be aware of if you're, you know, if you need two HDMI or if you need three DisplayPort or whatever sort of connections you need, make sure that those do work before you purchase the card. I think the last thing I'd like to touch on is the graphics card length. Now, I mentioned that with the ICX graphics card, but it is important to note that some mid-tower cases as well don't actually fully support large graphics cards. So I'd recommend, even if you're building a new PC or if you're just upgrading, check out your case manufacturer's website, the product page for your case, and check out what the graphics card clearance length is, and then go to the graphics cards manufacturer's uh, you know website and web page for the card you're looking at, and check out the length of the card and see if they match up. If they don't, then you will need to consider a different case or hacking it open. So I think that kind of wraps up the points from me. If you've got any other ideas and suggestions and things that people should take a look at when picking up a graphics card, it'd be awesome if you could leave those in the comments down below so we can all enjoy the learning experience. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and of course, share the video. It's the best thing you can do to help the, uh, help me and the channel and all that sort of stuff out, whether it's on Reddit or tech forums or Facebook, anything does uh, is you know much appreciated. And of course, if you want to support me even further, I'm going to leave a couple of affiliate links in the description down below to these graphics cards, uh, and of course, to Overclocks UK and Amazon uh, Worldwide, uh, so you can use those whenever you're picking up anything on those places. They do genuinely help me out and support me and all that sort of good stuff, so please do use those when you can, and otherwise, uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Check out some of the other videos. I'm going to leave some over here for your viewing pleasure. Of course, the subscribe button over there too, and otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.